physician or surgeon in Houston, Texas, and it is December 16th, 2020, and um, the FDA just approved the Pfizer COVID vaccine um, for emergency use authorization. I know that a ton of people have questions, concerns, fears about the vaccine, its safety, its efficacy. So I wanted to make a quick video to go over some of the frequently asked questions that I've been getting and, um, and go from there. I'm going to make a series of three videos probably, um, one today, tomorrow, and the following day. Um, just going over everything and if you guys have questions you can drop them um, in the comment section ask me on Facebook ask me on Instagram breathe best life and I will do my best to answer them um, as quickly as possible so the first question everyone asks me personally is am I going to get the vaccine my answer is yes absolutely yes Second question is, when am I going to get it? My answer is tomorrow, and I am so excited. Tomorrow will be my first dose, and then in three weeks, I will get a second dose, and then I will be considered fully vaccinated against COVID. So a lot of people have questions about how quickly this vaccine was developed, if shortcuts were taken, and is it actually safe? I want to assure you that I have read everything that the FDA has put out. I have read everything um, that the Canada and the UK, their health authority boards, I read all of that information and I feel very comfortable and very excited to get my vaccine tomorrow. I know that a lot of concern has come from how quickly this vaccine was developed when medications and other vaccines often take years or decades to develop. Um, a couple reasons why the COVID vaccine was able to be developed so quickly is because an enormous amount of resources were put into its development. We are obviously in a worldwide pandemic. Thousands of people in the United States are dying every single day. And instead of development being caught up in grand writing, trying to obtain funding, losing funding, writing new grants, etc. All that red tape in terms of paperwork and bureaucracy was just gone because the the absolute need for this. Um, another thing is that every scientist in the world was working on this development. And they were all working on it at the same time. This was every scientist, all hands on board, 24 hours a day, every single resource, no, never an issue with funding or anything to get this vaccine made, tested, and approved. So that is one reason, that is a huge reason why it was able to be done so quickly. Another way that it was able that the whole process was able to be expedited was because typically with vaccine or med medicine developments, you have your idea, you do all your paperwork, you get it approved, you develop it, you test it, you retest it, you retest it again, phase one, two, and three clinical trials, you submit it to the FDA for approval or denial, and then if you get approval, then you start production and development. Well, all the paperwork and the bureaucracy was gone, so that eliminated years off of the development. And then once it was kind of seen that the vaccine was safe and efficacious, so past phase one, past phase two trials, and they started doing phase three trials, they started developing it. They started producing it, so then as soon as approval came, it was ready to go. And we all saw that, right? Um, I believe it was the day after the FDA gave um, EUA approval, the vaccine was starting to be shipped. So, so things that normally delay a process happened simultaneously because there was a need um, for it. I'll go over very quickly 
clinical trials is I know that there are a lot of people that don't understand them and there's so much misinformation on the internet that it's actually kind of scary for me. It's very frustrating. So whenever um, a company is creating a new medicine or a new vaccine, you develop it in the lab, you test it, usually on mice, um, because they have a very quick lifespan. So you, you can give them something and see how it affects their entire lifespan in a short amount of time, a month or so. So after it kind of passes all of that, you enter your phase one study, your phase one clinical trial, excuse me. And phase one is literally answering the question, is this safe? Yes or no. So if I give you my brand new medication that I just created and it made the mice better or it had its intended effect, what happens if I give it to a human? If I give it to a human, is it going to kill them? Is it safe? Yes or no. Does it cause harm? Yes or no. What level of harm? So that's phase one. Phase two of a clinical trial then looks at efficacy. So we're still worried about does this cause harm? Yes or no. But then on top of it, does this medicine or vaccine do what we think it's going to do or what it's supposed to do? There's a lot of medications that enter phase two and they're safe, they're effective, but they're not effective for the purpose that we thought that they were going to be. And then phase three, that's the big one. So phase three is when you have decided it is safe and it does what we expect and or intend it to do. So then to make sure you give this medication to people in mass, we're not talking 100, 200, 300, we're talking thousands, okay, thousands of people. So in the Pfizer vaccine um, phase three clinical trial, 21,000 and some changed people received the vaccine. So I'm in the early phases of giving the vaccine. There are 20 something thousand people out in the world that have already received this before me. But anyways, that's what phase three is. Phase three is you get a large amount of people and you give them this drug or this vaccine and you make sure and you see, is it A, is it safe? B, does it do what it, what it um, is meant to do? And C, when we give it on a large scale, what happens? What are some of the side effects? What are some of the consequences? What are some of the, the unexpected results or unexpected benefits that we see with, when we give this to people of all ages, all races, um, males and females, et cetera? So, Phase one, because you want to just make sure it's safe, is given to a very small amount of people. Phase two, given to a little bit larger amount of people, but still, we're not talking about people in the thousands. And then phase three, that is where you get your big group of people, your thousands of clinical participants. And phase four is after something gets approval for use, Phase four is continued monitoring. So phase four is just continued monitoring and um, analysis of the data because you're obviously going to have more people getting said medication or said vaccine. I hope that kind of answers your guys' questions about the process and not to be as nervous and feel like if you get it tomorrow, if, if the vaccine is offered to you tomorrow, that you're like patient zero or patient 100, you're actually not. The people that really like experimented and have really been the true pioneers and selfless of these vaccine trials are the people on phase one, because they didn't even know if it was safe or not when they got it. The assumption was that it was safe, but just because you assume something does not mean that it's correct. So I hope that that answers your guys' questions kind of about where in the process we are. So Pfizer now has emergency use authorization and there will be continued monitoring. And my suspicion is that Moderna will also get um, emergency use authorization from the FDA too. 
And again, we'll be able to give it to more people and be able to continue to monitor um, side effects, negative, positive, and, um, and go from there. Other questions. So many people have asked me about pregnancy and is it safe to take when you're pregnant? I am not an OBGYN. I am not a maternal fetal medicine physician. I can tell you what the literature says, but at this point, if you're pregnant, um, I would ask you to defer to your medical provider. You can look on the ACOG website, um, acog.org, where you can also look at the um, maternal fetal medicine website. I think it's mfm.org or just Google maternal fetal medicine um, society. And they have their recommendations there. Uh, we can touch on some conspiracy things. There's no chip in this vaccine. Um, not only would that be immoral and ethical, but it would also be illegal. Before getting this vaccine, you are going to have to sign a consent form. I signed my consent form because again, I'm getting vaccinated tomorrow. And on that consent form, it lists every single ingredient that is in my vaccine. There is no microchip. I do want to remind everyone that yes, this is a vaccine. Yes, it is so exciting. However, things aren't going to change overnight. So far, the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine, they are a series of vaccines. So you have to get two to get the full um, intended results of the vaccine. So for Pfizer, you have to wait 21 days. For Moderna, you have to wait 28. So if you run into me on the streets, you're not going to see me without a mask or hugging everyone that I desperately want to hug. I'm still going to be masked. I'm still going to be practicing social responsibility. I'm still going to be social distancing. I'm still going to be requiring that anyone that is in my personal space also be masked because this vaccine is 95% effective, but 95% effective does not mean 100%. So it is prudent that we all continue to wash our hands, wear masks, social distance, and be cognizant about who we are around, especially the vulnerable populations. So another thing with the vaccine is because we only have so far a limited amount of data for the vaccine is whether or not these vaccines are gonna prevent disease or are they going to prevent infection? And we don't have an answer. What does that mean in layman's terms? That means I can be fully vaccinated, but I can still be an asymptomatic carrier of COVID-19. So I might be protected, but if I go visit my grandmother in a nursing home and she's not been vaccinated, I might have the virus and still be able to give it to her because I'm an asymptomatic carrier. So until more information is figured out, we all need to keep washing our hands. You need to wash your hands regardless of if there's a virus or not, period. But you still need to wear your mask. You still need to avoid large crowds and you still need to do your part to prevent spreading COVID-19. The other big thing, and this is huge, do you guys know how effective a vaccine is that no one is willing to take? It's zero. So if people continue to spread misinformation to the point where it causes fear and doubt in others, and then everyone's like, nah, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to I'm not going to take the vaccine, I'm just going to risk it, then the past year and this warp speed development of the vaccine is kind of all in vain because we have seen over the past nine months how devastating this virus is. We've also seen how quickly it spreads and how, how just devastating one infection can lead to multiple deaths. So 
whether you choose to get vaccinated or not, we still need to practice social responsibility because not everyone is going to be protected against this and no one will be protected against this until we have enough people in the population that are vaccinated. So please keep washing your hands. Please keep wearing your mask. Please practice social responsibility and don't let your guard down yet. We can all get through this. It's gonna take time. It sucks, we all know that, but we can do this. Um, I know that this video is really long. I hope that this has been informative and helpful. Again, if you have questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, you can ask in the comment section. You can um, ask me on Facebook or on Instagram, Bree's Best Life, and I will do my best to get, um, get you answers very quickly. I'm still working. Um, it's obviously the holiday, so it's a little bit crazy on my end, but I will get back to you. I'm going to make a video tomorrow. It will probably be very anticlimactic because I'm just gonna say, hey, this is me and I'm getting my vaccine. And hopefully um, whoever's giving me my vaccine tomorrow will let me film them and you guys can watch me getting my vaccine. Um, and then the next day I'll update you guys, let you know if I have any symptom side effects, I'm anticipating that I'm going to be just fine um, because in the clinical trials, people didn't have like the achiness and the fevers and not feeling well till their second dose and tomorrow's my first dose. So I will keep you guys updated. Again, I'm happy to answer any questions. Please stay safe out there, wash your hands, wear a mask, and just be kind to each other. And don't forget to live your best life.